Hello, everyone, and welcome to the PEC Global International Mission News, where we are representing Pentecostal Evangelical Church. We are here today to bring you our world missionary evangelist all the way from Malawi, and we're going to be bringing you up to date on Reverend Muzamara. So stay tuned, stay with us, and you want to be engaged and to see what we're actually doing in the nation of Malawi. I'm your host, Minister Love. If you want to contact us and see more and to hear more of what we're doing in this great evangelistic work, you can contact us on our email at faithandlove2 at yahoo.com. And you can visit our website to watch the videos when we do live interviews. Just go to my Bible registration. Dot com. So everyone call your family, let your friends know that they want to hear what we're going to be uh, sharing with you here on today. So also, everyone, we just want to uh, let you know about the Pentecostal Evangelical Church Organization. You can visit us at our website. We have a great bishop, uh, Dr. Edna Overstreet there, where she's doing a wonderful work uh, as I'm under her as a director over the uh, outreach missionaries here. So visit our website at www.pec.today. And if you want to become a licensed minister right here in the United States, or if you know someone in a foreign country that want to be an evangelist, a minister, a reverend, contact us. Just go to our uh, uh, page there, our website page. Again, it's www.pec that today to learn more about how you can be a part of this great evangelistic organization. As you can see, we're serving multiple uh, nations, Malawi, Burundi, India, Kenya, and Tanzania. And today we're going to be focusing on Malawi. So with that being said, uh, also everyone, we want to let you know that this uh interview is brought to you by MyBibleRegistration.com. MyBibleRegistration.com is set up where we give the opportunity for the missionaries to come on and they can do a live schedule a meeting with us, or I can just do a profile presentation like we're going to be doing here today. But we need your help. So we encourage you to get your Bible and register your Bible with us today. And when you register your Bible, you also get to be a part of our reading plan. You can join us to read your Bible with us from Genesis to Revelation from January to December. So you want to get in on the reading plan with us as well. And when you register and when you read your Bible, we also asking you if you would like to make a cheerful donation to support our Pentecostal Evangelical Church uh, outreach missionaries in these foreign nations, as we mentioned before. So would you do that for us today and register your Bible and God will bless you as he bless us for doing this great work. Amen. God bless you all. All right then, everyone. So with that being said, this is going to be our uh, missionary that we're going to focus on here with you today. We're going to be bringing to you today Bishop Musa Mara, and he's uh, residing in Malawi. So let's get a little backdrop about him and we can go a little further in the great work that he is doing. Okay. So Bishop Musa Mara was introduced to the PEC by his friend in college to Bishop Emmanuel Missingenica. He felt in his spirit to join PEC. He is now married with four beautiful children. He has one son named Jonathan, a daughter named Grace, and twin daughters named Praise and Favor. He was the first person in his family to give his life to the Lord. He has been in ministry since 1999. And since then, his biological brothers have joined and given their lives to the Lord. And this gives him joy. He has a deep passion for the loss in the most unreached areas. And those areas are where people don't even know or have heard 
anything about Christ Jesus. Good news of the gospel message of salvation. So he's our minister here on today, uh, Reverend uh, Bishop Muzamara, out of the way from Malawi. And so we're going to learn a little bit more on how he's evangelizing his uh the gospel message that he has a passion for, and he's going to be sharing with those in his villages and in his community. Amen. All right, then, everyone. So here uh, at the Pentecostal Evangelical Church Organization, we uh, certify these ministers. You know, they go through a process, a licensing process, an education process where they go through biblical studies. So here we want to show you that uh, Reverend Muzamara, he is licensed with with the PEC. So as he's uh, shown here. And so I'm sure he's proud of this uh, license, this certificate, because like we said earlier, when he felt in his spirit to join, this is what he saw. You know, he had a goal, he had a vision that he wanted to do the studies and do the required work to build up his faith in order to be able to do what he's doing now in this year of 2023. So we thank God for PEC. We thank them for their organizational setup on how they have a love and a passion to bring more people into the kingdom of God. So we thank God for you, uh, Reverend Musamara, for taking that uh, extra step. And now you can bring up others into this great work. Amen. So we encourage everyone to go to our website and you'll be able to learn more about what we do within the PEC organization. Amen. All right then, everyone. So let's take a look at what Reverend Muzarari church ministry looks like. So as you can see here, uh, that they're in service. Look, they're in a building. Thank God they got shelter. And so they're there praising the Lord. As you can see here, we have uh, individuals, we got adults, we got children. So the old and the young, the old and the young are here participating in this great work that the Lord is doing. So it looks like that we may be getting a uh, Reverend Muzumara into uh, the interview. Uh, we had him scheduled to come on live and I believe he may have had a little uh, uh, technical difficulty, but I can see him. So let's uh, join and see if he can hear us. Uh, Reverend Muzumara, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Okay, I uh, believe once he gets some audio, everyone, we hope and pray that he will be able to connect and join in with us. So as we were saying here, he has his church. He's praising the Lord. They worship the Lord. And it looks as if they were doing communion on this uh, service. I see the uh, the table set there, it looks like, uh, or that just could be his table uh, yeah, with the water and everything. So uh, I misread that, but this is great that they're doing the service of the Lord It's the family thing that they're doing. So this is just awesome. And I love how they got the windows and all the light is coming through. And it, you can see how the spirit of the Lord is in this place. So we need to support uh, brother uh, Muzamara and all that he does for the kingdom of God. Amen. All right, then everyone. So we're praying. I could see him moving, but we don't hear him. So we hope and pray that we will be able to get some audio. Okay. So let me see if there's anything on my end that I probably, probably could do. And I don't see anything there. All right, then everyone. So let's continue here on with our, uh, a uh, lesson here with our interview with the ministry of Reverend Musa Mara. So let's just uh, continue here. So here is another church service uh, that we are uh, privileged to be able to see here that he provided uh, for us. And look at the beautiful women and the children. And they, we're seeing that they are attentive. They're listening to the gospel message. 
uh, from uh, the Bishop or Reverend Muzamara. I think we got some audio. Uh, Reverend Muzamara, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So he finally got through. We thank you, uh, Reverend Muzamaro. So we were doing this interview, you know, uh, we went on ahead and, and started it. So I don't know if you were able to see what we have gotten so far, but we're going to go ahead and let you just get on into this interview and share with us this photo that we're watching here, Reverend Muzamaro. Tell us about this church service. Okay, this was a emissions emissions emphasis uh, program that I did at the church, empowering the, uh, the the people to go out to win souls for Christ. So hey. in short, it was a missions emphasis program, so that we can reach out to uh, the the unleashed places. Amen. And how often do you have this program going out? into the community how often do you do this yeah actually actually it is a, a monthly program that we do every month we we have uh, at, least, at least three days one day in a month that we go out and reach out to the unleashed places amen amen and how do you get to these places uh do you have transportation or is this all walking? How do you get? Uh, there are some areas that we need, we walk. There are some areas we need to sacrifice and uh, maybe contribute a little thing. And then uh, hire vehicles uh, that can take us to uh, those uh, places. Amen. All right. And do you find that the people are excited? to go and share the gospel message? Are they ready and willing to do this? Actually, in the first place, it was uh, difficult, but this time around, more people, more members of the church, and more of us are very excited when we go out and preach the gospel. When we come back, we have uh, great testimonies of excitement that the people are very happy that some people have given their life to Christ. So each and every time when we we have all those things, we, we they become very happy that we have gone out uh, preaching the gospel. Oh, that is such good news. We love to hear that over here in America, you know, and we are so grateful and thankful that we are in partnership with you there in Malawi and to be able to help you to to get the necessary uh, items and supplies and finances that you need to keep this mission going every month. So it's encouraging. Yes. It's very encouraging to see the heart of God's people wanting to help others to know about Jesus Christ. God bless you, uh, Reverend Muzumaru, for the great work that you are doing. So let me uh, ask you this. Do you guys have like a choir? Do you sing songs and praises? Do you have musical instruments? Uh, actually, actually, we we don't have uh, uh, musical equipment for the, the evangelism. We have what is uh, just an indoor equipment for the church that is not even enough. We only have a keyboard uh, and some speakers and amplifiers and some microphones. But we are dearly looking that the Lord will help us to find evangelism equipment that we can also use as a, uh, the equipment to use uh, for uh, praise and worshiping and, and whatsoever. But at the meantime, the equipment we have is not enough that can take us far. And even the voice doesn't go a far distance so that the more people can hear the gospel of Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, that's why we're here, uh, Reverend Muzumare. That's why we want to hear from you directly. So we here all across the world can hear uh, the great work that you're doing, but you need our help. You need more. So this is why we're asking people to
to register their Bibles and make a cheerful donation. And when they make that donation, we want them to specify that it is to go to your ministry. So they're going to put your name to that donation so we can make sure that you get it. And so we're just excited what you're doing there in Malawi. And then now everyone, and so we just want to remind everyone right here at mybibleregistration.com, as we just said, go get your Bible and register your Bible with us today and make that cheerful donation. As you just heard Reverend Muzamara uh, outline that they need instruments. They need the uh, keyboards and drums and guitars and, you know, what everything that we have here, they need it there. You know, so we want to be a support and make sure that the gospel is still being preached and praised in Malawi. God bless you, uh, Reverend Musumari, for that. So now we love this part of the interview. So Reverend Musumari, you gave us a scripture and we want you to read this scripture for us and share with the audience today why God gave you this scripture today. So Proverbs chapter three, verse nine, would you read that for us and tell us why? Honor the Lord with your substance and with the faithfulness of thy increase. Mm -hmm. uh, this actually came uh, to me to say preaching the gospel is the first fruit that we can, we can, we can give uh, in the kingdom of God. God is not looking for anything else. He's looking for us to present the first fruit. And the first fruit is that we have to preach Christ to others mm -hmm. because that's the main purpose of God. God gave us the chance to preach the gospel so that we can win these lost souls back to the kingdom. He gave us his only begotten son so that we should, at the end of the day, have that opportunity to preach the gospel. So I look, I'm looking at it to say it is the first fruit of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Preaching the gospel is the first fruit of the kingdom. These other things are just other things that are added. But when you get out and preach the gospel, the Bible says when one soul is saved, there is joy in heaven. So mm -hmm. when the first fruit has been reaped, when the first fruit has been harvested, the joy is great in heaven. So mm -hmm. I felt like we need really to give our first fruit of the harvest. Amen. Wow, you was preaching. That was a sermon right there. I, <laughs> I'm going to have you come back on the show and just preach a sermon. Amen. Look at here. Uh, you know what we do in church. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you are so right. The first fruit is the gospel because it symbolizes Jesus rising from the dead. It was the, yeah. uh, the day of resurrection, that first fruit. Yes. And it's the mm. gospel. It's the gospel. Yeah. So that's why it's so important. This is why people need to read their Bibles. They need Bibles because that's where the message is. So you get yeah. your Bible, you read your Bible, and you begin to get knowledge and understanding and wisdom. And guess what? You begin to grow. You know, that's yeah. that's the purpose of the tree. The tree has to grow fruit. We need some, fr uh, uh, look at here. We need fresh fruit and first fruit. We need some fresh fruit. And that fresh fruit are new believers. It's new believers coming into the gospel message. Wow. God bless you, Reverend Musamara, for that beautiful scripture. And let me just say this. I like where you came from out of the book of, Proverbs. And what is Proverbs? Wisdom. It is little golden nuggets. It's like precious nuggets that you can hold on to and it's very valuable. Wisdom is very valuable. Don't let it go. Don't sell it. Don't get rid of it. Come on now. That's how you that's how your life is going to grow. Your, your seed is going to grow so you can have what? First fruit. The gospel message. Woo! Hallelujah. Yes, yes. All right then. Amen. 
so Reverend Luzumari and to you audience, uh, I also have a scripture. So let me share with you what God gave me. God gave me Luke chapter 18, verse 16. And who's talking? Jesus himself, the very first fruit that we just talked about. Amen. Let's see what he says. But Jesus called them unto him and said, suffer little children to come unto me and forbid mm. them not for of such is the kingdom of God. Oh, come on now. Come on now. Ain't that what you're doing? Aren't, aren't you taking a gospel message to the children? Aren't you saying, come into the house of God? Come into the gospel message. Come to my church. Come hear me preach. Come hear me teach. Come on, little kids. Come on, little children. We love you. God loves you. Come on now. If it's not for the kids, you won't have the kingdom of God. If we, if we stop the little kids, how are we going to get in? How are we adults going to get in if we don't let the little kids in? You need the children. You need to feed the children. You got to clothe the children. You got to educate the children. You got to make sure they got health care. You got to take care of the little children. Because they are the future. They are the future of the kingdom of God. Come on now, Bishop. You know what it was with Jesus. Remember when Jesus was 12 years old? Where was he at? In the temple. In the temple teaching. Yes. And, and, and they want to stop it. Who is this? Who is this? How, how does he know all of this? They didn't want him in there. They didn't. The Pharisees, the Sadducees did not want Jesus teaching the children. And he was a kid yeah. himself. Are you seeing this? Woo. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, did you have a thought, Bishop? What did you want to say? I'm saying that's powerful. Yes. You know, it's you know, sometimes we broke people coming to the kingdom mm -hmm. because of their class, because of how they look, how mm -hmm. whatsoever, because of so many reasons. Mm -hmm. But Jesus calling everyone into the kingdom. Yes. The door is open to everyone. Yes. Regardless of the race, regardless of the color, regardless of the education background, regardless right. of whatsoever, anyone mm -hmm. is invited to the kingdom of God. Yes. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that Thank loving? You. That we got a God that welcomes everybody. Jesus just did not die for the Europeans. He didn't uh, just die. Come on now. He didn't just die for the... Uh, 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 come on now. He didn't just die for the Germans. He died yes. for every the Africans, Americans, yes. Germans, yes. Assyrians. Yes. Come on now. Muslims. Yes. Come on now. Cat, whatever yes. you are. He died everybody. for everybody. Yes. Come on, Jesus. Oh, look at here. I'm going to have to have you back on the show again. We just going to preach. <laughs> All oh, right, oh, then, everyone. So again, MyBibleRegistration.com. You just heard a powerful message from me and a Bishop Muzamara, the scriptures that we gave. Go get your Bible right now. Don't delay. Don't wait. Don't put it off till tomorrow. Do it now. Bishop Muzamari needs your donation now so he can keep bringing those little children into the kingdom of God. Would you do that? Yeah. Just go to mybibleregistration.com, click on the PayPal donation button, button, and any donation will be greatly received. And God will bless you for that. All right, then. Hey, everyone. Well, this is coming to an end of the interview show. We want to remind everyone, not only can you watch Bishop Muzamara on the website, but you can go to our YouTube channel. Just go to the Sister Love 
talk show. And there we talk about everything. We talk about the Bible. We talk about politics. We even talk about your dog and your cat. We talk about social media and we even talk about relationships. So whatever you want to talk about, send us an email and we will bring you on the show. Just email us at loveandfaith2 at yahoo.com and we will get you on the show. Amen. All right, then. So, uh, Bishop Muzamari, before I close us out in prayer, I want to give you the last word. Any closing thoughts or comments that you want to let the world know about this great work that you are doing? Yes, uh, we, 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 we want to reach even many places. The places that are unreached, the places that sometimes they don't even understand the gospel. But there are also many challenges that we meet, and uh, we want just to ask God to help you and help us to reach those things. Mm -hmm. Number one of the things that we need to do is to find the Bibles to share to the people that we have preached to. Mm -hmm. The Bibles are very important so that the people can lead and grow their faith in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Number two, we need also to look into the transportation issues where we can go to that end where other people cannot reach. We have already been uh, reaching some of the places that are tough, they are difficult, but sometimes by God's grace, we have been going there. We pray that the grace should be sufficient that we continue mm -hmm. reaching to the unreached places. The equipment, we have already talked, that other things. But we all need it again is the prayer that God should help you to pray for us so that we can have resources and go to the unleashed places. We thank you, Dr. Love. We thank you uh, for uh, uh, cooperating with us. We thank you for working with us. And we pray that one of these days, you will come down to Malawi and see <laughs> the good things of the good ministry that we are doing. And we can do that ministry even together in Malawi. God bless you so much. Oh, God bless you. Thank you for those beautiful closing comments. I tell you, I feel like one of them little kids right now. I'm so excited. I'm so happy because you know what? If we don't put our knees in the prayer, how are God going to meet them? We got to put them in the prayer so God can get the prayer Look at the prayer and say, oh, yeah, let me let me talk to this person so they can they can go on the website and make a big old donation. See, we got to ask God. We first got to go to God. So God bless you, uh, Bishop Muzamari. And with everything that you just asked for, I'm going to put that in the prayer. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, then, everyone. Why don't you join us in this closing prayer audience all over the world, wherever you may be, America, Australia, Germany, India, Malawi, Africa, wherever you are, join in this prayer and let's call down God and let's uh, let's see the manifestation of what God is going to do in this prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we come before your holy throne this morning, the throne of grace. You said in your word in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, that your grace is sufficient for all of our needs. So we're praying yes. for uh, Bishop Muzumar needs today for the church. He asked for Bibles. He need Bibles in their vernacular, in their language. So we're praying that the donation is just going to come in. So much uh, donations come in that we can send it to him. He can order the Bibles that he need. And then also, Lord, we're asking for musical instruments. We're, he's needing the, the drums, uh, keyboards, pianos, and microphones, and, and a new sound system. We're praying for all of that. Lord, if you could do it for us in America, I know you could do it for him in Malawi. We know you yeah. can do these things. And then, Lord, the children. Lord, we're praying for the soul, the spirit, the mind, and the hearts of the children that they see the grown-ups, Bishop Nim, doing this great gospel message, and they're, and they're getting on fire. They're getting the Holy Ghost in them, and they're learning that the kingdom of God belongs to them. 
So we're believing, Lord, as being youngsters, that they're going to grow up into adults continue to preach the word of God. So Lord, open up the hearts and the minds of those that's watching. Let them give, give until they just can't give no more. Let it be an abundant giving. Let it be a cheerful giving so we can have a great testimony for Bishop Muzarari. So with that being said, continue to bless the PEC organization. Continue to bless MyBibleRegistration.com. Continue to bless the Sister Love Talk Show as we bring these great uh, ministers before the world. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. And we're waiting with the expectation of the manifestation of this prayer request. In Jesus' name, by the blood that was shed on the cross, he rose from the dead, sits high in heavenly places right now, watching over the needs of the saints. Amen and amen. 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 All right, then, Reverend Muzamari, we want to thank you for joining with us here today. And we look forward to having you back again. Uh, and it's going to be soon because we can't wait to hear the testimonies. And, and the next time we come, we would love for you to have the children or someone with your ministry. We want to uh, hear from them as well. So we look forward to you being back on this show. Well, God bless everyone. Yeah. Uh, we love you all and be a follower, become a subscriber of the YouTube channel so you can continue to watch these great interviews. I'm Minister Love. God bless you all. Until this time next week, God bless and take care. Goodbye. Good guy.